All right, TJ. All right, well, good morning. Welcome everybody. Thank you for uh, joining in to the MLP ring and we're excited that you're all here. Uh, again, we're continuing to uh, meet digitally, virtually, or whatever electronic way we want to name this, but it's an opportunity where we can at least all get together. Actually, it's a, an efficient opportunity uh, where we can all get together uh, versus maybe having to always get in a car and drive someplace. Um, so I think there's always benefits and you always give up a little bit. So uh, when you can't interact, maybe more directly with somebody, but um, so I would encourage you as you are seeing the other participants on this call, uh, if there's somebody you want to connect with, uh, connect with them. Uh, and maybe you don't have a chance to do a one on one interaction uh, right here in this forum, but you can definitely interact with them at a later point. So use this as an opportunity to meet people uh, and connect with them outside of the meeting if you're unable to do that at the moment. So, but I do want to say welcome. Thank you for everybody uh, being on the call. Um, I do want to just uh, verify real quick. Um, I know Lori, you are on the call. I think I see Ron. He's on the call. Uh, Sharon, I believe I saw you. I can't see a whole list. You're here, right? And, and Tracy, were you able to be on the call? Again, I can't. I'm sorry. Apologize that I can't see the whole list. Tracy, were you able to make it? I don't think Tracy's on the call yet. Okay. All right. So uh, Sharon has emailed out the minutes for July. Uh, she did that uh, a little bit ago and I, I perused through them. I guess the first one to ask if, uh, if there are any changes to those minutes that need to be noted. Sharon's here too, sorry. Um, hey, Sharon. <laughs> hey, Sharon. Yeah, but, uh, thank you, Sharon, for doing those minutes. I really appreciate that. Uh, does anybody have any no changes problem, to those problem. minutes? All right, hearing no changes to the minutes, we'll consider those minutes to be adopted. Uh, if you are new to the uh, to the ring, so our ring covers a geographical territory uh, kind of from uh, Columbia <laughs> up to Myrtle Beach, down to Charleston, down to Buford and Hilton Head, um, and kind of out towards uh, Aiken. So it's a fairly large geographical ring. And if this is your first time, I want to personally welcome you. Uh, my name is TJ Watkins. Um, I am the uh, ring chair. I work for Enterprise Holdings, which is Enterprise uh, Rent-A-Car, National Car Rental, Alamo Car Rental, um, obviously uh, truck and car sales, different things like that. Um, our vice chair is uh, Lori G. She is with Savannah River Nuclear Solutions. Our MBEC chair is uh, Ron Harvey, who's the owner of GCS Consulting. Our uh, MBEC Vice Chair is Tracy Richardson, who owns Lilies of Charleston. And our Secretary is Sharon McGee of the Charleston Aviation Authority. So those are your, your ring leaders. We also are um, joined by Dominique, who's the President and CEO of CVMSDC, and uh, a, a multitude of those staff members who are very helpful and willing to assist you in any way you can and help us put together these presentations. So thank you all, all for being here. So. Uh, with uh, that said, uh, I think, uh, Lori, I'll kind of turn it over to you and uh, let you run this meeting. You, you may be on mute, Lori. I was. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, so, so we've already done the, um, the introduction, um, the leadership updates and um, the minutes approval. So um, I guess we will start with um, our introduction to our speaker. Okay. Jimmy McMillan, Mac, as he's known, was named Assistant Manager for Infrastructure and Environmental Stewardship for the Department of Energy at Savannah River in February of 2019. Mac is a member of the Senior Executive Service and comes to SRS from the Environmental Management Office of Safeguards, Security, and Emergency Preparedness at DOE headquarters. He managed a staff that assessed the capabilities and compliance of EM sites 
relative to security and emergency preparedness and had responsibilities for DOE headquarters, administrative security functions for EM employees. We also, he also developed strategies for implementing DOE securities and emergency preparedness policies and facilitated their coordination across all EM sites. Prior to joining the Department of Energy, Max served 31 years in the Air Force in multiple assignments, including Director of Security Forces and Deputy Chief of Uh, Lori, I think we lost you. Did you by chance go on mute? Lori? She's still there. Lori? All right. These are these are sometimes the challenges of virtual meetings. So tell you, why don't we just turn it over to uh, Mac? And um, Matt, we're just going to give you the floor and let you just kind of run with it. Yeah, the Bible's not really that important. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Hey, first of all, thank you very much, and especially thanks to Laura for inviting me to speak to this uh, august group of prestigious people and uh, with well accomplished. Uh, looking forward to it, and I uh, really appreciate it, the, uh, the note from uh, Dominique Milton uh, for inviting me uh, formally and also to ring. MLP ring leaders uh, previously articulated uh, by TJ, uh, who those members are. But thank you very much. And uh, I know my time is limited. I promise not to be diary of the mouth, not to ruin your lunch. And I know I'm talking close to lunchtime, so brevity is going to be important. I'll try to be brief, be good, and be gone. Be good if you have your evaluation, not mine. But I'm really excited to be here. Anytime I get a chance to talk about leadership, uh, in particular, my, one of my favorite subjects, I know it for about 30 seven years now which, uh, since I've been in my professional career, so I was looking forward to do that. But just remind everybody, when Lori asked me to speak, uh, I made two assumptions. Uh, one assumption I made was no one else was available. Uh, the second assumption I made was that I waived my normal, my normal speaking fee, uh, so you can get what well, you get what comes free, and, uh, and now I can't see you. Uh, I don't know if you can see me, but you can pretend you have been listening for at least a little bit. Um, you know, I, as I thought about leadership and, and the presentation I gave in Laura's presence uh, at another function, um, over time when you sit and think about where you've done and where you've been and, and what got you to where you are, you, you start uh, reflecting on what's, how can you boil it down. And today I'm not going to say anything that's going to give you any kind of a <clears throat> aha moment probably. I'm not going to say anything that's probably going to be a surprise to anyone in this room or, or in this audience. Uh, but I do think uh, there's some things that we as leaders have to revisit and constantly remind ourselves of why they're important. And as I was saying, thinking about my career over 31 years in the Air Force and my uh, seven years in DOD at this juncture, uh, I kind of boil it down to acronym I call it TIPS. If you've been in the military at any time, you know, we like acronyms. Uh, and what TIPS means is uh, transparency, integrity, performance, and service. And if I had to give this uh, a title, it would be Engaged Leadership and Leading Through a Crisis in particular. Uh, I think um, it's important for leaders to constantly examine where they stand on these principles and expect to, uh, to they expect to be uh, effective or, and be engaged with their people. You know, what, I, what I've determined over the years of my time as a leader is some leaders are gifted. And when you're a gifted leader, people can feel your presence because they see it in your soul. And some leaders that just have just have, have talent, and talented leaders tend to perform well. They're, they're not necessarily motivated people or obtain su of sustaining uh, results. So when you talk about these principles of tips, and the first one that comes to mind is transparency. Uh, everyone wants to know if you are trustworthy. Do you have an undermining agenda? Do you speak the truth to all issues to your staff and stakeholders? And do you speak the truth publicly? Uh, too often, leaders allow their perceived power and prestige and profit margin to rule their thinking and negate the power of influence of the people they lead. Uh, I think as a leader, your people, your business partners, your stakeholders can see through you like a glass house if you're uh, not sincere. And sometimes when we're in the leadership positions and sitting in our high-powered offices and 
looking at our uh, C-suite offices, prestigious C-suite offices. We sometimes think the light is shining on us, and in fact, it could very well be shining through you and exposing your lack of truth, your lack of truth or transparency. You know, every time I was promoted in the Air Force uh, in my career, I would call my grandmother and let her know. Uh, God rest her soul. She lived to be 104 years old, and I think she'd never been in the hospital but twice in her life. Uh, I just pray that has some real genetics. Uh, my grandmother would always remind me the higher you go in life, the more your butt shows and people are taking aim and putting you down. So, my advice in that regard is be true to yourself, and more importantly, be trustworthy in all things, large and small. And your organization will flourish because transparency, in my mind, creates an atmosphere of organizational freedom that promotes increased productivity. Uh, I suggest that you don't take shortcuts or mis misrepresent the results to achieve success without putting it in the work. Too often, sh uh, shortcuts lead to the wrong destination uh, for your organization. So being transparent to your people, being transparent to your public, being transparent to your stakeholders, uh, it's just the uh, just to tell me your organization, your reputation, and legacy of your organization for sure. The other thing that comes to mind is integrity. And this is where it's probably, I want to say the most important, but to me, probably one of the ones we should probably spend a lot of time thinking about. Integrity, in my mind, is like your coat of armor. And as a leader, once you lose your integrity, you work like heck to get it back, or sometimes you may never get it back uh, without somebody extending some grace to you. Your integrity can never be for sale, and everyone you encounter should recognize it in you, based on your actions and your deeds. Now, I'll give you one small example just to make the point. My son, uh, living with me in my household, uh, was always um, treated like a soldier or airman sometimes, but he, uh, he understands at 27 years old why that was important. Um, and when he went off to college the first time, we had a long talk about uh, integrity and, and doing the right thing. Like most parents would have with their children when they're about to send him away alone. And um, one day I'm sitting, my wife and I had a debate about how much money we should give him per month to spend for incidental and accidentals. And I said, well, I think I'll give him about $50 a month. I said, well, that's, that don't seem like enough. I said, I think that's plenty, you know. So being a good, good spouse, I, I acquiesced to her request. And she wanted to give him like 40 bucks a month. I said, well, that's way too much money for a freshman. Now that's way too much. So about a week, about the first month of his uh, time in school, he uh, used to check his account. And, and on his account, one Sunday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, he had something called Red Dragon Tattoo. I said, boy, that better be a bookstore. Um, so I um, called Red Dragon Tattoo, and there was a tattoo shop. And I said, hey, have you seen a kid in there about so tall, uh, brown skin, curly hair? And yeah, his name is Darius. He's the only black kid that's been in here. I said, oh, OK. So my wife went upstairs to do something. I jumped in my school, going two and a half hours away. I jumped in my car, drove all the way to his campus, and uh, got to his campus, called him on his cell phone, and said, we need to talk. He, he was shaking, nervous, scared to death. Uh, and went for a little walk. I said, son, you just violated your integrity. And you just disappointed your mother and I. Because we had this conversation about tattoos and what we felt about them. You don't use anybody else's money to do that. And even to this day, the tattoo around his waist, it's a biblical tattoo, and that's okay, but the lesson I wanted to teach him there was, and even to this day, the lesson I wanted to teach him was you can't violate your integrity and expect to be respected. And to this day, we looked at that tattoo, it, it bothers him. And that's a good reminder of what integrity means. So he, he brought it upon himself. But we're often going to be confronted with situations of leaders that test our integrity. And if you compromise it for small competitive or personal advantages, your armor is cracked. And the more you violate your integrity over time, eventually you will be completely naked but not ashamed. And that is not a good state to be in. I can give you countless examples why that shouldn't be. Your integrity must be the light that invites people to you, inspires them to be a better version of themselves. And it suggests that you are always right and not afraid to admit you're wrong. And you have an obligation as a leader to create an atmosphere where people are encouraged to speak their minds, uh, and comfortable bringing you bad news and trust, and trust that you'll find them good solutions. There's nothing more important to the quality of your life and the people you lead than your integrity, exhibiting all you do and say. Consistency matters when demonstrating integrity, so don't violate it. It's the last thing you have that separates you uh, from anarchy and separates you from 
uh, people that uh, tend to do things for the benefit of themselves and really nobody else be damned. So as a leader, your people are watching. The next part of that is uh, tips is performance. I think we have an obligation as leaders to set a high standard and expectations for yourself and your organizations and assist your people measure up. You need to provide the training and resources to facilitate their ability to meet organizations expectations. People always rise to meet challenges. I know I've been uh, disappointed in that. If well-trained and equipped to perform their duties. One example I'd like to share with you at this juncture is that when I was a group commander in charge of uh, I, uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles in Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota, I had an organization of about 750 people and had about a $2.1 billion budget and we were failing uh, nuclear security inspections. And uh, when I got there, so I had to go about making some changes. And what I realized is that uh, the people that was doing the job were doing a very good job and wanted to maintain that uh, credibility. What I realized is that the people who was in charge of them were not doing a very good job. So I had to eliminate some people. I had to mention to fire some people and change the whole culture. Sometimes you may have to do that. And But we were losing on every end. We were not uh, doing with the work going right on base with a high uh, DUI rate. We weren't uh, passing our annual inspections. And our every 10 year inspection. So, fast forward, yeah, that's about a year and a half of implementing some changes and changing the culture and shifting the focus and motivating people to be better versions of themselves. We end up being the best security force group in the United States Air Force out of five. And we are winning the, uh, having the best inspection of a nuclear security uh, agency uh, in 10 years, uh, rating about spending, how you can achieve. And we went on, uh, people went, my people went on to win major awards at the site. And in fact, we won so many awards. Uh, my bosses came in and said, what are you doing to your people? And they said, our answer was very simple. You motivate, you train, you lead, you inspire. And that's what they measured up. And they were capable of doing it, just needed somebody to care. So your reputation is measured by both current and past performance. Only a, a servant leader can guarantee an organization with a reputation of excellence and service. You should never compromise high customer focus, either in, internally or externally to the organization. Understand and communicate customer expectations to your employees, and you should strive to exceed it every time with integrity and tact. Uh, an organization's sustained superior performance is determined by visionary. Is he frozen? Yeah, Mac, looks like he might be frozen. What a cliffhanger. Give him a second here and see if it can unfreeze. Yeah, hopefully he can go out and come back in. Pretty much what I had to do. While hopefully, we're waiting. Uh, <laughs> while hopefully we're waiting. he knows it. What was that quote he said? The higher you go, the big, the more your butt shows? What, who, who, who got that whole quote? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm loving that. <laughs> Yeah, that's what the grandmother told him. <laughs> Which kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it. That was it. I didn't get the second part of after he said that that that, that part. Oh, it was I good. think that rounded it out right there. Yeah, that, kind that, of right. <laughs> that set it off. That was great. Don't have to use that one. <laughs> Yeah, and I can't remember one of our CVMSDC board meetings. This has been several years ago, um, and I, I wish I could remember who said it, but it's always stuck with me. But it basically says your reputation, ethics, and integrity is always easier to retain than to regain. Oh my God. And uh, that has always kind of stuck with me that, you know, no matter the work, the cost, or whatever it is to retain your ethics, your integrity, it is cheaper to retain it than to have to regain it. I love that. So, I just wish I could remember. I, I, I can't remember who said it. I need to go to some old, old board members and find out if, if anybody remembers who, who, who told us that. I think it was when Eric first, I think it might have been Eric's first board meeting. So it wasn't Eric that said it? No, it wasn't Eric. I can't give him credit for that. It was it was a guest speaker that we had. I just honestly don't remember. So, but I tell you what, while we wait to see if Mac um, uh, is able to get back on, uh, Ron, uh, would you like to step in and kind of get, maybe give us an update on the MBEC side? 
putting you on the spot. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Appreciate that, uh, uh, TJ. Um, and thanks to everybody else that continues to support uh, the MLP ring. We're super excited about the the momentum that we're we're picking up um, and starting to do things in our in our region. So that's always a a great thing for all the people that have invested um, in this organization and depend on us to do uh, great things for us. And so the the thing I want to bring to our attention for the updates is is just remember our monthly meetings. We have them on the calendar. Um, if you have any questions about where we're going to host and what we're going to do, you know, and Dominique may share some of this stuff, but go to the the CBMSDC calendar. And it has all of the ring meetings for all of the different rings that because we're virtual, you can attend. Um, and so they're all doing great things and different things, um, you know, across the board. So if you're if you have the opportunity to join some of those meetings and figure out what can help your business stay afloat. Um, so go to the CVM SDC calendar. Um, our next meeting is September the 16th. Um, I think that's scheduled for 12 p.m. So it'll be an hour different. Um, also, um, we're, our ring is going to be considering and starting to think about an initiative of doing developmental workshops. Part of the council is the word development. And so one of the initiatives that we're going to kick off is, is begin to start um, building workshops around the things that all of our MBEs need for development. So when they're going into corporate America, that we have them well prepared, well rounded, and pretty confident about how they show up and what they do and what they deliver. So we're going to start um, rolling those out in our meetings. Um, and not necessarily this meeting, but we're going to have workshops for our all of our MBEs to get better. I think we owe that to them. Um, everybody's trying to pivot. So that's an update for us is we're going to do that. Also, um, there are a lot of what we call straight talks. If you want to find out how to do business with, with companies and corporations, if you go into that calendar, you will see they have a really, really great lineup of straight talks. You know, what we have come up is Lowe's. We got Capital One. We got Turner Construction. We got SRNS, um, you know, so we got a ton of straight talks. If you feel like you don't know how to do business with these corporations, please join the straight talks and get it straight from that organization of what they're looking for, what they're not looking for, um, and hopefully give you some insight to make you smarter about how to do business with them. Um, so I think that's super important. Also, our year end conference is coming up. That's going to be three to four December. Um, I'm sure Dominique can hit that for us. So that's virtual. That's going to be another phenomenal event for you to join. Please, you know, um, spread the word. Uh, we're doing phenomenal on the virtual platform. Um, the other thing, uh, Mac is not here, but I do want to say, I think Mac did a great job. Dominique called it. Um, and the acronym TIPS, phenomenal acronym um, that he's operating off. It's pretty simple. So um, thanks to TJ, Lori, and the rest of everybody that's in a leadership role, Tracy, um, and also sharing for helping us begin to um, do some things during COVID. We didn't shut down. We just had to pivot and start doing more in our ring, and we're doing that. So thank you. And for all, everyone that's joined us, thank you all for joining us. Continue to tell people about us. We're super excited. If you missed the conversation yesterday, the town hall, you missed the treat. Um, that town hall was phenomenal. I mean, Lasagna Berry and Kingston, who um, actually moderated and, and pushed that off, did a phenomenal job. So give them a virtual round of applause or send them an email. That was a great event, and we're getting better at everything we do. So thank you all for allowing me to serve in a leadership capacity for you. Tell us what you need, and we'll do everything we can to deliver that to you. I'll pause there, TJ, and hand it back to you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Appreciate all that, Ron. Um, and uh, Mac, were you able to join back on? I was trying to look down the participant list here. Um, he is trying to connect um, as we speak. Um, there's not a call-in number, is there? There I'm is the line. The number. There is. If you could send that to me. Yeah, Laura, if he has the meeting invite, it's on the meeting invite underneath. Okay. He said it's on the meeting invite. It's underneath okay. the links. Okay. Okay. Is it quicker if we just read it out to you, Lori? I'll text you. Yes. Yes, it would be quicker because I'm on the phone with them now. So, okay, I'm doing it now. And okay. and, and TJ, while we're waiting, uh, you know, I just want to thank um, this ring for your leadership. Um, this ring is truly growing, and um, you know, you have 26 people on the phone right now. So I'm seeing the tremendous growth that's happening. I do want to have Debbie, who is your staff liaison, um, to give you an update on newsletters and the year end event, if she would.
Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the MLP ring. It is my pleasure to serve as your staff liaison. Ron Harvey, who's always on point, is, has covered everything as far as events is concerned. Um, but as Dominique said, I hope that everyone is um, accessing and reading the newsletter that comes out every week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, we do try and focus on the upcoming events that Ron went through but our specific focus on these next few months will be our year end business conference, which is a combination of our BOC, which is our lar historically our largest fundraising event, um, which had to be canceled because of COVID. So we did a pivot in this virtual space and have combined it with our MBE summit, which is traditionally the end of the year. So the dates for that is uh, December 2nd and 3rd, our um, title sponsors are Bank of America and Clemson University. So we do have a tremendous lineup, um, very engaging panelists that are gonna be coming before you, the workshops we're very excited about. So we are hoping to be getting that information in your hands within the next few weeks, but please save the date and watch for your news, watching your newsletters for all of the uh, great webinars that we have coming up. Remember, again, you can attend any one of these webinars, any one of these ring meetings because it's virtual. So sign in and find out what's going on across our entire footprint. If you do miss any of the meetings or webinars, we do have them recorded for you. So in your downtime, you can go right over to the website under webinars and catch up on anything that you've missed thus far. So thank you so much. And I'll turn it back over to the leadership. Thank you, right, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Appreciate all that. Sorry, didn't, didn't mean to jump in front of you there, Dominique. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I just have one more quick thing, TJ. We have seven new corporate members. I'm um, actually eight new corporate members that have joined us year to date, and one of them is in this footprint, and that's Optus Bank. So really excited to have Optus Bank um, join out of the MLP ring. Oh, Welcome. and one and also, other one as well. Down. Oh, I'm sorry. Which one? Uh, Crystal Ray. Oh, yes, Crystal Ray out oh, of Charleston. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry. Hey, welcome, Chris. Well, we already, yeah, did a, we already did an intro for us last month, but we'll take a second introduction <laughs> from you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> we're greedy like that. And also, while we're talking about new members, we had 13 new MBEs certified, and there are two in your ring. Um, one is so help me in welcoming Tora Consulting. They're in your ring as well as Rhino Medical Supply. So both of those are your new, two new MBEs um, that just came out of the last session. Excellent. Also, awesome. Awesome. Everybody, this is great. See some growth and all that. Fantastic. So. And we have free and post next week, so I will be inviting the ring leadership to attend so that you can meet them virtually and tell them a little bit about your ring as well. One other one other point while we're on it, I just wanted to also let this ring know that there are two other new since the last ring meeting. There are two other new uh, corporate members that we just wanted to make sure that you knew about. Uh, one is Guilford County, North Carolina. So just we want to welcome them as new corporate member, as well as American Tire Distributors, also out of the Charlotte area, but. Wanted to make sure that since we have MBEs on here as well, we want to make sure that they, you know about all the new corporate members that we have coming in. Excellent. I think that, um, Go ahead, Lori. Dominique, this is Alex Adjumon with SRNS. Um, got the pleasure of having our corporate manager for government and community, community relations on the call. I would mind if we could just give him a few moments to tell you about who he is and what he does. I think it'd be a great opportunity for maybe you two connecting um, later in the week to understand how we might be able to do more to help. Sounds great. Did you want to say a few words, sir? Yeah, hi. Uh, this is Chris Caldwell. Um, as Alex said, I'm a government relations and community relations manager for Savannah River Nuclear Solutions uh, here at the Savannah River site for the Department of Energy. Um, as Alex said, I lead um, 
kind of a threefold mission. I'm responsible for uh, government relations at the local, state, and federal level. Um, I oversee our uh, site tour program, which if any of you haven't toured the site, we certainly welcome you. Right now we're shut down due to COVID-19, uh, but each year we tour about 2,000 people across the Savannah River site and get a chance to see the facilities and the operations that uh, continue today and have um, been occurring here at the site for the last 70 years. And uh, finally, um, and probably the most importantly, I also coordinate our corporate philanthropy activities. Um, each year, Savannah River site uh, gives approximately $1 million uh, in the local communities, and that includes uh, educational outreach through, through K through 12 and our two-year and four-year institutions in the region and across Georgia and South Carolina, and then partnerships uh, both to the United Way organizations and a lot of other philanthropic endeavors. Um, also very involved right now, we just kicked off our site United Way campaign, which that's an employee-led campaign, totally separate from our corporate giving. And each year, Savannah River Nuclear Solutions employees give $1 million uh, with a corporate match uh, to the United Ways, both in uh, the Augusta region and the United Way of Macon County. So um, I know Alex and his team, all the procurement organizations are very involved uh, with your organization. He invited me uh, to listen in and learn more. Um, I know there's a lot of great activities um, ongoing in the region and look forward to learning more in any ways SS can partner. Uh, you obviously know we have a great representative in Alex, but anything we can do to support, uh, we are certainly there for the region. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you so much for your support. And I look forward to talking to you one on one. Alex and Lori are just, they lead the charge with our team. So I really appreciate them. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you so you. much. TJ, I think your speaker's back on. All right, Mac, are you yeah. there? I, I am here. Can you hear me? I apologize for the technical glitch. Oh, that's no problem, man. Well, we're going to just turn it back over to you and just let you continue with that, with that great um, conversation. Okay, thank you very much. All right, well, I was on performance, I believe. Before I close that particular area out, uh, I, I just want to uh, emphasize why it's important to sustain superior performance, uh, and it's determined by your leadership. And uh, I, I'll use the analogy that I was going to use before we shut off is that I like to use analogies of my son because he's always my, my learning tool, now he's my thinker. Uh, you know, when he was in high school, he was an athlete jock like his father, and um, I used to always tell him that, uh, you know, as long as you're a 40 yard dash time, you get your GPA, we won't have a problem. But if you don't have, if you have poor work habits, and either your physical conditioning or either your academic standards, because his mother was a school teacher and uh, he knew what the standard was, but every year he would come home and show me, he said, I can't run a, a 4 5 40, but I didn't have a 4 5 GPA. I said, we're good. And so he would always play, otherwise he couldn't play. Uh, you're going to make mistakes as a leader, and, and what you need to do is capture the lessons you learn and move on. Achieving perfection is challenging, but it, it should be your aim. Uh, if you don't get there, just keep working at it. That's what makes life so great and being a leader so great. We always got work to do. You should never get stuck in the mud on failure. If you get power to fail, you have power over you, and failure is a stepping stone, not something that, not, not an obstacle containing your goal. Uh, so uh, I recall when, um, uh, Another friend of my son was uh, in elementary school, and he was hiding his grades from his father. And the reason why he was hiding his grades from his father was because his father always told him that 100 was the best and nothing else mattered. And so the kid had a 98 on a spelling test, and it was back on the floor one day. And the father saw the paper underneath the chair and said, hey, son, can you move that paper? And the son uh, stalled and looked at him and said, uh, I would like to, Daddy, but I, I, I'm a little afraid. He said, why? He said, because it's my spelling test. I said, well, why are you hiding your spelling test? My grade is not 100. Well, uh, let me see what you have. He had a 98. He said, did you give your very best to this? Yes, I did. Uh, then don't worry about it. This, this is good enough. So my point about that is sometimes your employees may not reach 100, but if they're given 98%, that's to be commended. And uh, I would tell you that service is the last one. I believe, and in my experiences that I've uh, lived through, service is the greatest calling to mankind. And, and, and you must serve not just yourself or your personal agenda, but you must learn to serve others. Uh, there's a quote I read in the Combat Creed some time ago, you have not lived until you have kneeled to serve. And service to others, your organization, your country, your community uh, has to be bigger than yourself. 
and it will define your legacy as a person and as a leader. To lead people in service your organization, you must display love, respect, loyalty, and humility. I don't understand why leaders have such a hard time looking at employees in the eyes and eyeballs and large functions and tell them you know that you're loved. When I was the uh, top cop of the Air Force as a brigadier general, I had the highest suicide rate in the United States Air Force. And every morning by 7 o'clock, I was uh, hesitant to turn my computer on when I came to work at, at the Pentagon because I knew I had people deployed around the world. And I had 35,000 uh, security police men and women deployed around the world, in Afghanistan, Iraq, you name it, all over the place. And invariably, I get an email that says, that looks at it and says, hey, we had a suicide last night or we had a suicide this morning. So I had, knew I had to do something. So I, I started collaborating with my mental health professionals, my chaplains in the Air Force, how we fix this. And what we found out in our studies was that people had a stigma about reporting how they felt, how they believed, because they didn't want to appear weak, because we had set a culture that said you've got to be tough. Yeah, you got to be tough, but we all are human first. And so once I broke that culture down, started sharing my experiences with them, and every time I talked with them, I said, hey, know that you're loved, somebody loves you, and there's no problem in this world so great that can't be resolved. And your people got to understand that you got to share it with your people. And they got to see it in you. But we was able, through all that, bring our suicide rate down. There's a lot more we put into that. But I won't, for the sake of time, I won't will, will belabor that. But just let you know that respect, loyalty, love, and humility will bring your people closer to you. Uh, nothing as a leader is ever about you. It's always about the people that follow you. And every day you must interface with your people. They must know you want them to succeed and committed to serving them and their families. I never understood why a CEO could feel comfortable. Uh, even though he started to come, he has the right to take as much money as he wants to uh, spend as much as he wants, et cetera, can be whatever the board of directors says it's going to be. But how you do that, you have not walked around among your people, understand their issues and their concerns. And uh, you could cut your salary. You could cut your salary and make them whole, have a living wage. Why would you do that? That is service. Uh, when I was a wing commander at the Air Force Academy, on Sundays at the Chapel Church, my wife would hate to go to commissary with me where we do uh, grocery shopping or something called the BX or PX where we do clothing and merchandise shopping. Because invariably, I'm going to run into some of my people in there uh, of, of the 10,000 I was control of, in charge of, and they want to bring their, their wives to meet me, their kids to meet me, their dog to meet me, and just have a conversation. So a 30-minute trip is going to be two hours. But that's a good problem to have because your people running to you, that means they respect you and they know you care about them but they're running away from you, that's sending a different, a different message. You should always be available to your people and allow them to see you, see your heart through your deeds and learn to look behind their angry faces to see their hurt and disappointment. Nobody comes to work every day and say, I want to do a bad job. About 95% of people in every organization want to do a good job. They just need good leadership. And everything hinges on leadership. You can make excuses for it. You can uh, dismiss it. You can blame someone else. Uh, you can defer to someone else. It is your responsibility as a leader of that organization. And people do better on the leaders who make them feel valued and help them reach their full capacity. And that translates, translates into organizational pride, profits, and progress. So by way, by way of closing, just want to remind you, TIPS has been a foundation of my leadership all my life, and it served me well in some difficult times. Regardless of what kind of organization you lead, transparency, integrity, performance, and service are paramount, are paramount to, to your success. None of us are perfect leaders. But in the midst of our imperfection, we must be honest, vulnerable, and real. And as long as you lead and speak from struggles and successes, you will never lack character or content, and your people will follow. I think that concludes what I want to say to you, and just want to take the opportunity to thank you again for inviting me. It's always a pleasure and honor for me to talk to anyone who wants to listen and talk about leadership. But I think that's the key to everything we do in our lives and in our communities. Awesome. Thank you so much um, awesome. for taking the time out um, to even speak to us and um, accepting my invitation for this. So I appreciate you so much. <laughs> right, thank you, ma'am. I okay. sincerely appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All of us are clapping our hands, Ms. McMillan. That is just outstanding. <laughs> yes. Thank you for those tips that you um, inspired us with this morning. Well, thank you very much. And I'm signing off. And you guys have a blessed day and continue to look up, lead up, and uh, challenge everything that comes your way to improve it.
Awesome. Yes. Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Okay, um, Dominique, um, is there anything else you have you want to say? Um, I know Ron spoke. I, with I, I, yeah, my team has really covered it all. I just, I really, mm -hmm. again, just want to thank you all for the growth that I'm seeing, the leadership. You know, I'm a firm believer if you build it, they will come. You just have to stand and, and, and you know, provide great content and, and make the, the reason valuable for people to spend the time here. And you all are doing that. So today was very enriching. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. I want to defer my time to all the people on the, on the call so we could do the round robin if, if that's right. That's Mm -hmm. exactly. And I was just going to ask, are there any updates, success stories or opportunities anyone would like to share? And I think Gene, uh, he has his name, his hand up. Gene yeah, may have George. accidentally done that. He might Gene have not the that. most computer savvy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, Lori, this is Ron. I think Karen Jenkins team is on the phone, if not Karen okay. herself. Um, if, I know she's received an award as M, um, and she's one of our MBs that's doing a phenomenal job and, and, they, and she was on the panel. Karen, if, if your team is on the phone, can you just share one of the awards you just received? And um, I know I don't know if you want to release it, but could you share that great news? Uh oh. Hey, Ron um, and everyone. This is Jermaine. I'm sitting in for Karen Jenkins today. She's on another call. But she just was awarded, um, we were 546 on the Inc. 5000 list. And she also was um, here in Columbia. She was nominated and she's got the Inc., uh, the Icon Award. And Phenom is, I guess, a local newspaper here has a uh, an awards and she got that award here in Columbia as well. So KRJ yeah. Consulting is on the move. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. And, and Karen Jenkins is also our uh, entrepreneur in residence, which helps our county library yes. and all entrepreneurs. So she just got nominated to be the entrepreneur in residence. So um, it's exciting to have people that's on board that are doing great things and our MBEs need to see that. Um, and not everybody's doing well at the same time, but there's a lot of stuff happening in our, in our, in our region. So thank you for sharing that with us. And I just wanted to highlight that for you. Thank you. Thank you. So y'all know this is like the virtual hand clap, right? So everybody just give Karen Jenkins and her team the virtual hand clap. Oh, I will let, uh oh. And I think Jean did have a question. Um, Jean, do you still? You are mute. Profound as always, Jean. <laughs> I actually have a question. Okay. Um, I was looking on the calendar, so many great events, and I noticed that there was something on the calendar that didn't have a description. It was pre-certification, post-certification. What, what are those events? Marge left? Okay. So, um, <laughs> Every month we welcome in new MBEs. Um, so this month we've had 13 new. So pre-certification are sessions we give to MBEs who are potential MBEs. They're not certified with us yet, but they wanna know about who we are, what we do. Post-certification is for those who just recently got certified and we tell them what their next steps are. So, it, and if you'd like to join in, other just let me know. I can definitely invite you. Um, and that's why I'm encouraging um, the leaders on the ring to attend to greet these new MBEs and welcome them. Got it. And well noted, we will add descriptions. Gene, there's a mute button that you can click and you can come off mute. It's next to the camera. He doesn't know where it is. Okay. At the very bottom. <laughs> I guess it is. It may be on the top on his screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep going around the circle. Jean, can you type it in the chat and we can read it out? Type it in the chat. Okay. 
Okay, while he's doing that, folks, let's keep going so we get everybody in. So while we're waiting, um, let's let's talk a little bit because we have quite a few MBEs on the line. Let's talk about the virtual capabilities um, briefings that have picked up great momentum. I see that we have um, Herbert Drayton who had uh, his session a couple of weeks ago. Tracy um, Lilies of Charleston is on. She had a virtual capabilities um, briefing and I would encourage any MBEs that are on the line um, to send me your capability statement. Let's get you booked for your 30 minutes. Um, it, this is a one to many opportunity where you are putting your best foot forward. Um, in front of your peers and our corporate partners. So we are booked up through the month of October right now, but as we get closer to year end, Dominique has graciously agreed to start doubling up if we need to. That's the kind of momentum that we're picking up with this. So again, this is a great opportunity for MBEs to um, showcase their business in front of uh, a one-to-many audience. And that particular session will live on our website and on the webinars page. So if you have not taken advantage, please do. Can we just go around and see if anybody has a comment? Tracy, you want to comment on your um, VCB? You're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute, Tracy. Is there a master mute? Because some people can't get out, out of mute. There is, but I, don't, I do not believe this meeting is set up like this, so I'm not quite sure why people are being locked out. Can you see if we can unmute everybody? Tracy, we can't hear you. Okay. Does anybody else want to try? Hey, Dominique, this is Daniel. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Freeman, uh, CEO of Genius Talent. Uh, first and foremost, uh, fantastic ring meeting. This is my first time uh, joining the MLP. I'm, I'm a part of the Piedmont ring. Uh, and fantastic job uh, to the leadership, TJ, you and the rest of the, the crew. And uh, Jimmy uh, provided fantastic, a fantastic tip on tips. Uh, and I thought that was uh, really, really good. Um, so I just wanted to say that and introduce my organization, Genius Talent. We provide uh, staffing and recruiting services in IT, healthcare, uh, and uh, professional services. And we're all about uh, solving problems and serving people. So thank you for your time today. And uh, this was a fantastic event. Thank you and welcome. Next. I will say that the MBIC town hall meeting that Ron referenced it came out in the newsletter this morning. The full uh, rewind of the event is there. If anybody wants to tap into that newsletter, you can watch the whole session, which was extremely powerful. TJ, back to you. All right. Appreciate everybody uh, joining in. I, I will say if you're running this, um, these meetings from the um, from a web application, uh, you may want to consider downloading the Teams app. Um, I'm not all that tax tech savvy, but I personally have found that actually running these meetings from the app uh, seems to be a little bit better in controls and things like that. So you just may want to consider that uh, for the future if you're if you're running this through um, a web browser versus the actual app itself. So um, that's really what I have. Lori, is there anything else that you have? No, that's not. Uh, there's really nothing more just besides, um, um, as it states at the bottom, uh, any additional information. 
or it says if there are any, you know, suggestions or topics that you would like to hear more of, definitely just email me and um, we will work on getting those so it can cater more to what you're um, looking for for your business. Excellent. That sounds Ron, great. And Ron, I'll, uh, has, Ron has something, TJ. Uh, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, and, and thanks, uh, TJ and, and Dominique. It's one of the things as a leadership company here in Columbia, which is what we own, um, and we do a lot of leadership development to help organizations stay successful by developing their leaders intentionally. So, you know, of course, I love the topic this morning, so it's right up my alley. Um, and so he did a phenomenal job. I want to share that we host an event every year. Um, I'm a part of the John Maxwell team. Our company is. And we host a leadership simulcast every single year. We're in our sixth year of hosting this event. And we're going virtual this year. And I put inside of the, the chat box for you the link for it. We're going totally virtual. Um, and this year we have four speakers that will be a part of that. So you get to do it from the comfort and convenience and safety of your home or office. And we'd love to have everybody that, you know, to share that with people that are really trying to figure out how to continue to navigate from the leadership perspective. It's all leadership and building communities. So that link is in the uh, chat for you. I would love to see, you know, the support from this community to continue to make this event what it what it could be and can be and grow our community through leadership. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with the entire um, group of leaders that's on this call. Oh, great, Ron. Thank you. So John is obviously a well-known leader. I've read or audioed several of his books. He's, he's phenomenal. So thank you for bringing him here. Um, anybody else? You know, they got that little raise your hand thing you can throw on there right before we close out. I'd like to give an opportunity. Any MBEs that um, want to introduce themselves? Any corporations that have an opportunity that you want to make sure MBEs are aware of? Um, feel free to... Uh, chime up before we close out. That's the purpose of this is connecting corporations and MBEs together. Anybody else? I will add, let me add one more thing. I will add that as we plan for our December 2nd and 3rd event, we have a planning committee and Debbie's in charge of that as our event planner. Um, if you're interested in, in helping out, please let us know. Um, we're, we're preparing all the workshops, our auction, and we're getting ready to I do a call out for awards um, to recognize MBE, uh, recognize our corporate partners. And so look, be on the lookout for the award um, nomination forms that are going to be sent out. But again, if you want to volunteer, there's, there's quite a few volunteers on this call already. But if you're interested, um, please reach out to Debbie Pettigrew. That's a great way um, to uh, meet and then network with each other is when you volunteer for these type of positions, you will, corporations will meet the MBEs and MBEs will meet the corporations. So I encourage you to volunteer. It's just a great way to get involved and to network. And thank you. And Alex Roberts is on the line. Alex, can you um, unmute and speak or do you need um, us to cover that for you? So I don't think she can unmute, but Alex Roberts is our social media specialist, and she wants to make sure that everybody joins us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, so that you can follow all of our postings. Thank you so much. All right, that's all I have, TJ and, and um, Laura. You all did a fantastic job pulling this together today, and the speaker was phenomenal. Thank you for your leadership, Tracy and Ron as well. Thank you for your leadership. And Sharon, can't forget you, Sharon, because you're keeping us all together. Yes, <laughs> she does. Sharon had to. Sharon had to slide yeah. off. But she she uh, did. Okay. Me, but uh, yeah, she she keeps it all moving. So thank y'all very much, um, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing to meet each month. Um, I just would encourage everybody on the call um, come prepared next month with you know if you're an MBE, have your have your little elevator speech ready. And maybe you can raise your hand and make sure that everybody on the call knows who you are. If you're a corporation and you have some opportunities, maybe get a snapshot of what those opportunities are so we can spread that amongst the team here. Uh, this meeting uh, will be as good as the people who input into it. So we encourage your input and your participation as much as you can. But thank you all for being here and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Keep on using it still. Um, 